Hello ladies and gentlemen, Askey here for Nerf TV with a hero overview and build for Strife. Today let's look at Minerva. Minerva is a largely melee assassin hero who is very adept at bursting down targets quickly and stopping her foes from making an escape. While she's able to dispatch a single target very fast, it will cost her heavily on her mana pool to do so, keeping her from being able to burn through an entire team too quickly. However, her short cooldowns on skills means that if you can keep her mana high, she will always have plenty of options. Even her ultimate skill only has a 20 second cooldown. So speaking of skills, let's go through them and cover the basic way to build her effectively. Always start off with Hunter's Strike. This is a ranged single target attack that damages and slows targets. Useful for some early game harassment and last hitting brawlers, especially important if you're up against a ranged opponent. At level 2 you get Cyberstalk. This will be your bread and butter skill for a lot of the game. It dashes you towards the target, deals a small amount of magic damage, increases your attack speed and places you behind them. It also has 2 charges and only a 5 second cooldown. This is a brilliant skill at keeping you on top of the target and boosting your damage. Also it positions you behind your foe so it can be used to set up for your ultimate. At level 3 put a point into Shield of Forbis. This is a passive which grants you a shield equal to a percentage of your maximum HP whenever you cast a skill and it will also stack. This means that by spamming your low cooldown Cyberstalk you can keep up an effective barrier as you enter combat. For levels 4 and 5 get 2 more points in Cyberstalk and then get your ultimate at level 6, Impaling Sting. This deals magic damage to the enemy, when face to face with your foe its damage is reasonable but not that great, however if you can get behind them it deals a further 50% making it very strong. Its super short cooldown of only 20 seconds means you can also use it very freely and often have it up by the time you need it again. Really this is going to be your finisher, initiate with Cyberstalk or Hunter Strike if they're far away and then Cyberstalk in. Deal damage to them with auto attack, staying on top of them with a second cyber strike if needed and then end it with an impaling sting. Next at level 7 you're going to max out cyber stalk before maxing out hunter's strike, picking up your ultimate again and then finish off your shield before maxing out impaling sting at level 50. Following this line of skills gives you massive early game burst damage and allows for a lot of early kills, allowing you to snowball very heavily into the mid and late game. The shield is left to last as it's the least useful and focusing on your other skills makes it so your foes won't be attacking you as they'll be far too busy running away. As for your pet, I like either Razor as a decoy, some lifesteal and attack speed or Bounder for the added mobility for chasing down targets and moving around a teamfight. For your items I like to take a Mana Shard and Clarity Shard first. The extra mana helps keep you in the lane and both these items are used further down the line. The other option is to take a healing rod, however I prefer the added mana and faster items later. As well as these I take a health potion in case you take too much damage. Next up you want to rush the mystic dagger. This is why I think it's nice to go for the mana shard first. This item adds to your damage but also gives a bonus 50% on your next attack after using a skill. Seeing as cyber stalk has almost no cooldown this can easily give you very early kills. Next up get the basic boots. Then it's up to you whether you leave it at that for now or upgrade them. Leaving them as the basic ones means you can get the next item faster, but sometimes you'll find that upgrading will be of more use. Either way, it's up to you. When you do max them out, go for the spring boots as this will give you more mobility. These can be used to engage foes in dangerous situations, like under a tower, picking up the kill and then jumping out. They're also great for escaping throughout the game. Other than that, warp boots can be used for a nice global presence. Next on the list is Grimure. This will boost your damage further and make your skills ignore 35% of magic armor. Useful for your ultimate in particular as you'll now be able to burst down tanks more effectively. Next up I like to get the Dragon Shield. This gives added defense and damage but also couples very well with our next item, the Crystalline Shiv. The Shiv adds to your damage and gives some mana regen, using the Clarity Shard from earlier, but it also gives a bonus damage while you're at high HP. Because you now have two shields, the Dragon Shield and the Shield of Vorbis, you're going to remain at maximum HP for a long time while you engage a target, getting some real value out of the Crystalline Shiv. The next thing on the list is the Power Conduit. This will do away with your mana issues by granting you a 20% bank upon kills and assists, as well as a massive boost to your damage, health and mana pools. As a final item, I would recommend the Inferno brand if you can get the gold for it. Seeing as the Shiv is quite cheap in the late game, it's quite possible to do this. This will add to your DPS quite substantially and give a little bit of defense. The other option is to go for Soul Seeding, which can also help keep your HP high. Taking this item route gives you some serious early game stomping power, meaning you should be able to pick up some early kills on your opponent in a lane, but also gank very effectively on the middle lane as you move into the mid game. 
It keeps your HP high, adding to your defense for shield, but does so in a way that maximizes your damage even further. Buying mana pots throughout the game will be necessary, but not a lot, but it's nice to have one on you so you can be prepared quickly if your natural regen won't be fast enough. Most of your foes will not be able to stand up against the damage you can deal and will often turn, exposing their backs to even more damage, and for Minerva, offense is the best defense. So let's go through each part of the game and what you should be doing. In the early game you want to be on a solo lane. This will maximize your income and will likely leave you up against a carry which will have fairly low HP. If they send a tank though things are going to be a lot harder. Just try not to bow to the tank's harassment. You might have to forego early game kills in this case and instead focus on last hitting to bring in the gold. Normally though against low HP foes you will be quite capable of picking up early kills, especially once you get the mystic dagger and can spam your Q for extra damage. Harass with Hunter's Strike to keep up any extra pressure and also use it to last hit minions if you need to. Into the mid game you should hopefully be dominating your lane. If this is the case start to help out in the middle lane as well as pushing the towers. Always try to focus on the most well fed squishy targets on their team to put them back in line. This will be your role in any team fights as well. During the team fight phase, your timing is very important. Use cover of tall grass whenever possible to get the jump on your enemy and make sure to focus down the glass cannons first, and then assist in focus fire of your team as long as your HP and mana will allow for it. Into the late game you'll be a deadly force, able to down almost any enemy in seconds. Keep an eye out for stragglers as 1v1 you can almost beat anyone, but always make sure you're there for the team fights, bringing down the high damage heroes that quickly can give your team a massive edge. All in all, Minerva is a deadly assassin and should be treated as such. While you won't be the very first into the fray, as soon as the enemy is distracted you can jump in and burn down a single foe before they know what's hit them, just as any good assassin should. So that's our guide and basic build for Minerva. Stay tuned for more Strife guides and videos, but for now I've been Asky here for Nerf TV. Thank you for watching.